Welcome to Life in the Mountains. They have a special surprise for you. It's underneath here. All hail the chipper. This thing is pretty awesome. It's the champion chipper. It's actually a chipper and a shredder. It chips on the bottom and you shred up top. Today we're gonna do a little review, walk through of it, and then we're gonna see it in action. Woohoo! All right, here is an overview of the unit. It comes essentially almost assembled like this. You do have to assemble the top section as well as the front chute when you get it, but everything else comes pre-assembled. Oh, you also have to assemble the handle. Oop, I'm pointing the right spot right there. Um, and it's pretty easy. It's great. It's pretty much straight out of the box. This is a direct drive model, which means that the uh, big flywheel that chips all the woods is actually connected directly to the engine. And that's really nice. It's a little bit harder to start, but there's no clutch. So it's just a simpler design and I haven't had any problems with it so far. It also comes with this bag right here sort of like a nylon mesh bag and that catches all of the wood chips and puts them in a really nice skinny tube that you can then dump in your tractor or your trailer or on the ground, whatever you want to do. Now as far as the controls go, it's a pretty standard small motor. You've got your choke right here to start and then it's very responsive and it's pretty much you just need to choke it for the first couple pulls and then it'll just fire right up every time even if it's wet weather and we're at 4100 feet elevation haven't had any problems with this starting it. So it's been a really great, super reliable motor. Um, got your throttle control right here, and then your gas on and off, and you also have an electrical on and off switch. I really like what they've done here, because sometimes they won't give you a gas on and off, or they won't give you an electrical, and you have to just choke it to close it. This just has all the options. If you want to just turn the gas off, if you want to turn the electrical off, or just choke it, so it turns off that way. It's, uh, it's great. One of my favorite features is this pull handle. Look at this bad boy. It's freaking awesome. I don't understand after using this why anyone ever invented those little tiny plastic T handles. It just sucks. This is a godsend, especially because this is, like I mentioned, a direct drive shaft. And so it's definitely, you've got to reef on it a little bit because you've got to turn that whole flywheel initially. One really nice advantage um, by having this be a direct drive is that it's so much inertia that if you get it spinning It kind of just keeps itself going and then it starts itself pretty easily. Yeah, big gas tank We got our air filters right here and then the carburetor and everything else Great design. The only thing that I find extremely ridiculous on this are these little baby wheels Look at these tiny wheel things and they actually have a fake plastic cover and they're even more flimsy. I thought they would just break um, with the first couple of uses of pulling it around, but they haven't broken yet. Knock on, uh, knock on plastic. So, yeah. In here is the chute. It comes with this little guard right here. It's uh, kind of like a really thick rubber. And as you can see, after probably using it for maybe five hours or so total it's already starting to kind of break and fall apart but this is actually advantageous because it's it when it does start to break apart a little bit and become a little bit more um <laughs> flexible i guess it helps the wood go in it's pretty stiff when you first get it so this right here is the limiting factor in the diameter size this is a three inch diameter and that's it's pretty true to size it's it's real tough to get a true three inch in there because it has to be perfectly straight but it is possible all right down here we have the shredder now it's hard to see but basically on the shredder side of the flywheel you have these pieces of metal that are kind of loosely attached and they just they just flip around super fast um, in additional rotation to the flywheel on the other side you have the fixed blades that actually chip the wood so it's a nice dual purpose design that you're shredding on this side of the flywheel and you're chipping on that side of the flywheel. They don't recommend putting anything over like a pinky width of a diameter for a branch size in there and that I uh, would definitely, definitely caution you to not do anything larger than that. Um, you also want to be careful to do really long spindly pieces of, of wood. I put a long thin piece of, uh, I think it was ash in there and it actually did get wrapped around the flywheel. So I've just been sticking to using smaller pieces 
of wood and then stuff like this is perfect like this this little pine branch would be a perfect thing to throw right in the shredder all right so as great as this chipper is um there's a lot of prep work that's required unless you have really long clean spindly trees like ash uh it's going to require a lot of work basically anytime it's inflexible enough to bend whatever branch you have uh, is going to be a problem um, so stuff like this no problem at all you can see this is all stuff that i have used my use my saw here to trim all the branches off and get them as straight as possible and anytime it bends a lot i cut it right at that bend and this is a totally feasible piece to throw in there i'll show you guys in a bit but no problem that kind of bend is not an issue at all but you really do have to take your time and that that the chipping is relatively fast if this is what takes a substantial amount of your time so you just whatever you're chipping you just have to make sure that you go through and do your due diligence otherwise you're going to be stopping in the middle of the job and you know cleaning it up and trimming it up so it's not a problem and goes down the chipper chute nicely but everything that you can see here i've already done that for and this probably took me 30 minutes or so to get all of this and it's probably going to take me maybe five minutes to chip the whole thing it goes pretty fast so this is what i'm working with i have four ponderosa pine trees that i downed and i usually don't want to take down trees as big without a purpose and that's exactly why i had to take them down we're trying to get new internet a much faster internet co-op at our house and these were directly in the way of the 5.4 gigahertz line of sight connection so i had to unfortunately take these down but trying to make good use of them that's what i'm doing here is i'm chipping up all of the smaller branches that are three inches and below i'm going to put them in my cart here and take them to our garden which i'll show you soon to fill in the swales and provide some landscaping and mulch it's a really nice way to make total use out of everything because usually you know, I would just buck this up, let it cure, have it for firewood, and then the smaller stuff could be bonfire wood. But now I can use pretty much essentially every part of the tree with very little waste. I love it. All right, let's fire it up and see it in action. I, you have to wear ear protection with this. This thing is insanely loud. It honestly sounds like a, like a jet engine is the best way I can describe it. So let's do it choke is on and I like to start it a little bit less than full throttle personal preference
that was just a couple minutes and uh, we're already full of one bag. We're actually overflowing. Check that out. It's a really nice mixture of the of that chips and the needles. It'll it'll uh, decompose really nicely. This bag is just about as much as you can carry. So it's actually really nicely sized. You wouldn't want it any larger than this. As you can see, it's a pretty decent capacity. I could probably get four or five of these in this trailer. This is a 17 cubic foot trailer. So I just do four or five of those runs and then I'm full. Really nice stuff. So the chip size on this puppy is a little bit smaller than what you get with big commercial chippers. It's like uh, 3 eighths to a quarter down to like an eighth of an inch for some of the really fine stuff. The biggest that you can get, I mean, this is almost a half inch. Yeah, it's a little bit over half inch actually. And it's, it's just really, pretty rare to get those big pieces. So on average, I would say about a quarter to three eighth inch chip size. Man. Ooh, that smells so good. Absolutely love this dub trailer. Boom. What a time saver. Work smarter, not harder. My number one rule. Look at all these park chips. For probably 45 minutes worth of work. All that. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you liked it. I love that chipper. I think it's a really great investment and it's a really smart investment if you're a homeowner on a lot of acreage like us. We have 61 acres, tons of lumber, tons of brush, and it just really allows us to use it for a multitude of purposes. Right now, as you just saw, filling in the swales that we have that hold water. Um, that's a great use for it. We use it for mulch. We use it in the, we have some puppies. We use it in the puppy pen area, landscaping. We put it on paths. And overall, it really, um, it really saved us a lot of money in the end. That was about $800. And I expect to get 10, 15, 20 years out of it. And over that time, for the amount of chips that we're gonna make, it definitely is a smart investment financially. So, yeah, solid machine. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next time.